for the week. The kingdom ain't for free, it's for the meat. All I need is a little milk, don't need no meat. The prophecy, they coming up, you know it's gonna get. So explain it to me. Say it again? No, I haven't, so explain it to me. Okay, okay. Um, so the Feast of the Pure Realm, you read about it in the same place you read about Mordecai in the Bible. What book is that? There you go. So when you read the book of Esther, you know what time it is. Right, you know what time it is. <laughs> this ain't the first time you had to come. Hold it, you hold you it out on You can't walk around for 40, 45, 50 years and nobody ever tell you about the book of Esther, your name Mordecai. That ain't gonna happen. So when you read the book of Esther, um, you know there was a decree sent out to kill all the Israelites. Let me introduce us, you know, who we are, what we do, so y'all kind of know, you know, a little bit more about us. So I'm, I'm your host, Shua. All right. Caillou. Then we will. All right. We were the organization called Israel United in Christ. What we do, we, we teach the Bible, man. We teach the Bible. Not in the conventional way, not, not the way that we all grew up learning it in church on Sunday. Uh, what we teach is that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites according to the Bible. So we the real Jews, you know what I mean? The people over there in Israel right now, they stole our heritage from us and then gave us a different name to go by, African American. Like if I, if I ask, Brothers in here, what, like, what's your nationality? What would you say? Jew. You would say a Jew? All praise. All praise. Good. Now, everybody ain't saying that. And Ten right. years ago, won't nobody saying that. Right. But we've been out on the street teaching, and that's the message that we're trying to bring to the people. Like, what would y'all say your nationality is? African American. African American. That's a common one. Anybody else? African American, black, right? So these are all terms that just like came about since we came here in America. But we existed before America existed, right? We won't call ourselves black, won't call ourselves niggas, won't call ourselves African American. We got a rich history and heritage that goes back to the scriptures. So that's what we teach, all right? So we trying to bring the solutions to all the problems of our people because we can find the problems in the Bible, and we can find the solutions in the Bible. Right. But the issue is, ain't nobody really teaching what the Bible say. They teaching right. Right. the religion that our oppressors gave to us. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, there's some things that we do in the community. A lot of times when people get introduced to us, they typically meet us on the street. Have any of y'all seen us teaching on the street before? I have. You have? Where you seen us at? Newport News. Newport News? You spent a lot of time in Newport News. Any of y'all seen us before? Nah. Yeah, uh, yeah, seven cities. Seven. Yeah. You be in the seven city? No, seven cities. The store right there. Oh yeah, yeah, in Portsmouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Portsmouth yeah. Boulevard. Okay, you so you seen us out there? That's like uh -huh. the deli, right? Seven city. Yeah, deli, yeah the there? corner store. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so some of y'all have seen us out on the street. Um, any of y'all seen us online? Nobody saw. Uh, nobody saw us march through Inglewood or nothing like that. I'm in Chicago a couple years ago. Nobody saw the purple and gold outside the Barclays with yeah, Kyrie. I, I, I see, I see, uh, I, I see, see it on YouTube. Yeah, he would be arguing, they'd be arguing. Well, not arguing, but a discussion. You know, I mean, uh, it'd be an argument sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it'd be an argument sometimes. But the reason we like to come to the shops, you know, sometimes people get introduced to us by way of an argument. When people get to talking about religion, you know, people get real passionate. Sometimes people get upset. We know what we're talking about when it, talk, when it comes to the scriptures, but we want to create a different environment sometimes too. You know what I mean? We want our people to know like, <clears throat> we are brothers, man. We, we on the same side. We see the same issues. We got the same problems in our family and we're trying to fix them. So it's, it's some other things that we do. We, not only do we teach on the street, we got, uh, we got a real popular program that's gonna come up right now called the Youth violence and conflict resolution seminar where um, we're trying to give our people different different alternatives to resolve conflict. Now we all, uh, we follow the homicide tracker. <laughs> On the, uh, the WTKR homicide tracker, it, it keeps track of all the homicides through the seven cities. Last year it was crazy. Last year it was crazy. We, we had like record murders in 757. Newport News and Norfolk was going like back back and forth on who had the most murders last year. It ain't getting no better this year. So we're trying to bring different solutions to the community. So we, we, we're going to teach you the Bible on the street. 
But for the people that we can't catch on the street, we got the juvenile detention program. Uh, we got prison ministry programs. We uh we giving out food to the community through the food bank and all of that. So we're really trying to help the community out. <clears throat> so we want to come here to the shop, talk with brothers. You know what what what's some things that y'all seeing in the community? What's some issues that y'all seeing? You know what like what what's some common things that y'all hearing come through the shop? What's what's everybody talking about? Well, one of them is that as black people, we're looking for somebody else to solve our problem instead of us participating to try to solve the issue. And when I say that, it's because that everybody in the city know who kills somebody. Right. But they'll run downtown, they'll tell the police about everything except this person that just took somebody's life. Right. Okay? And then we are looking for the police department to be this savior when they're not going to be the savior, but the people in your community can be the savior. Okay? Because it ain't about snitching, it ain't about doing any of the dumb things that people put out. It's about trying to save your community. And when we don't participate in the things that go on in your community, this is what we're going to get. The, the women, Everything that's been done, it starts at home. Okay, people don't want to accept the fact that the thing starts at home. So if your kid acting wild at the house, he gonna act wild out here in the streets. Okay? If he's disrespectful to authority, he's disrespectful at the house. Because he has no respect for authority because of the way he talked to his mom and daddy at home. Home is like the training ground. It's the training ground. Right. So when you have no training ground, we got to stop putting it on somebody else. Because the first thing they say is the white man. No, it's us. Right. When we sit out here and say Black Lives Matter, we can protest all day long when the white man kills. But Every day somebody died in the black community and the white man ain't kidding. Now you know what, more, more to count. I like the point that you're bringing out, right? Just to go back to the Black Lives Matter, right? So we got this whole movement called Black Lives Matter and everybody want to stand up and protest when a police officer kill a brother, right? Right. Right? But where would everybody in here say is the most dangerous place for a black man or woman to be. In his own neighborhood. Okay, you say in his own neighborhood. What about you? On the street, period. On the street, so anywhere in the neighborhood, anywhere. in the street? Anywhere. Anywhere? Anywhere. Okay, and, and who else got a thought? Where's the most dangerous place for us to be? On the Anywhere, 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 anywhere. My man right here with the hat. You got your son getting his hair cut. Where would you say the most dangerous place it is for our people? Projects in the project. Okay, so universally we all say pretty much saying anywhere in the streets, right? I'm gonna give y'all something to think about. This is on a billboard. All right, the most dangerous place for a black person to be is in the womb of a black woman. Mm. Okay, I said You said that, why you said that? Tell me why you said it. Tell me what, okay, tell, tell tell me what tell that means mean first. Okay. Tell me what that means. Because we're going back again where it starts from. Uh-huh. And it starts from her be being in her womb. Mm -hmm. Everything that she takes in and does affect us from the beginning. Now, what, what is most likely to happen to a black child in the womb of her mother, of his mother? Okay. Me now, this is, what, this is how I feel about it. Being in that woman's womb, if she's not educated or understand how she's training that baby in her, mm -hmm. the baby will come out dumb as hell anyway. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll take that, I'll take that. So Mordecai, that was, a, that was a good thought, good perspective. I want somebody else's perspective. Why is it that the most dangerous place for a black person to be is in the womb of their mother? 
That's the first place of learning. First place of learning? Yeah, the, the baby start learning in the womb. Okay. So the environment you create for them in the womb is gonna affect them when they come out of the womb. Get you encounter why you, why the baby is in your womb, the baby gonna inherit that environment. Okay, okay. I wanna try one more. I wanna see if somebody else could get what I'm thinking. Right there, what's your I name, bro? I can't think right now. Can't I'm trying think? to think now, I'm trying to yeah. All right, think about this. The reason that the womb of the black woman is the most dangerous place for us to be is because the black woman is most likely to abort her children. Mm. Damn. My man said, damn. So, so look at the hypocrisy of Black Lives Matter. We want to march and protest because somebody that we know that hates us does what a hateful person would do. We, I shouldn't be surprised if a white person killed me. Right. They hate me already. They brought me over here in chains. They threw a bunch of my brothers and sisters off the side of the ship. Sharks was, was following the ship so that they could eat. They got here, they hung us by nooses. They killed us, they starved us out. If one put a bullet in my head, why would I be surprised? Why would I march and protest for that? But the woman that's supposed to nurture and develop my child, when I put that child in her, she's killed more of our brothers and sisters than any white person ever has. Put, a, put all the murders of white people against our people together, it does not add up to how many abortions the so-called black woman has committed against her own people. The abortion thing is because Blacks are having babies more, and the white women are having abortions like that, like your man baby. So if you instead of killing your race off, that gonna make the black black race get power sooner or later, and they don't want that. So that's why they are so hard against the abortion. Our black women have abortions, but white women have it more. That ain't what the stats say though. I'm gonna see if I can pull up some facts for you. The, the black, Hispanic, Native American women have abortions at an astronomically higher rate than any other race. All right, and when we look at the murders in our community, the people who killing the most of our people in our own community are our own people. Yeah. So we gotta fix that black button. That's what I just said. But look, the, when the conversation started, because we, we started talking about Black Lives Matter, and we go in an uproar, we want to protest for people that hate us doing what we expect them to do. We ain't protest against ourselves killing each other. There you go. Right. There you go. We're not protesting. Like, where, where, where is the community of people lining up, marching through the streets with signs saying, stop committing abortion? Where the people marching through the neighborhood saying, thou shalt not kill, don't kill your own brother? Y'all remember, uh, it was a movie, uh, Planet of the Apes? Y'all remember Planet of the Apes? Like the more recent joint? Yeah. In the more recent joint, um, y'all remember that apes started to have a conflict with the humans, right? And then they were out in the forest and they was like reestablishing what their code is gonna be on how they can, uh, on how they can overcome the humans and make sure that you know, the apes survive and not have to enter deal with the humans. It was a code that the apes said that they was gonna live by. They put it on the chalkboard. Anybody remember what it was? Apes don't kill apes. There it is right there. There it is right there. That's the code that we supposed to be living by in our community. Blacks don't kill blacks. Hispanics don't kill blacks. Blacks don't kill Hispanics. We gotta understand who our real enemies are, cause we see each other. The Bible said they should not kill. You. That's what it they says. Shouldn't be killing nobody. Perfect. Well, that, that's that's what it God said. Also says it's a time to keep. It, it do. It do. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. So when the Bible is talking about thou shalt not kill, if it says it's also a time to kill, what would be the like? How do we connect those two dots? What would that mean? Justice system. I said the justice system. Yeah. So what that would they're mean? The ones, they're the ones. To be supposed to be doing it. I mean, it's still wrong. If it's killing, it's killing. But if it's the time to kill, then at some point in time, it's appropriate. Say that's what you're supposed to yeah. go by. Right. The life is threatened, but who is our life typically threatened by? Each other. Right, right. right. <laughs> so, so when the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill, what it's teaching us is the same thing that Planet of the Apes say. 
Ain't no kill eight. Blacks don't kill black. My life shouldn't be threatened by my own brother. That's why we gotta learn how to love our neighbor as ourselves. So that's that's the message that we looking to bring to the community. The same thing that they teaching in Planet of the Apes. The white man already want to call us apes. Really, when they they more like apes than us. Apes really got white skin and thin lips. They just got black hair. So who really more who really more like the apes? Them, them or us? They are. They are, they are. Can I ask you a question from your earlier point? Yeah. Um, who would be our enemies? So the brother asked you a good question. He said he wanted to go back to the point that we made earlier. He said, well, because that was when we were talking about thou shalt not kill and understand who our enemies are, right? <laughs> now, we're, we're not advocating violence against anybody. We're not saying go out and kill anybody. But the scriptures do talk about self-defense. No, nobody should just let somebody just kill them and say, well, I just let them kill me because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. So since if, if we understand that we aren't each other's enemies and we're supposed to be each other's brothers, well, who are our real enemies? That's why we got to go back to the Bible. The Bible is going to tell us exactly who our enemies are. But it's, that's not who it's supposed to be. That's not who it's supposed to be. Now, the Bible outlines specifically who the enemies are of the real Jews, of the real Israelites. So once we understand who we are, that we are the real Jews, we are the real Israelites, now the Bible's gonna make more sense when it says thou shalt not kill on one side and then it tells us who our enemies are on the other side. Give me Psalms chapter 83. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse two. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Start at verse one. Verse one. Keep not thou silence, O God. So the scripture says, keep not thou silence, O God. So we don't want God to be quiet about all the things that is happening to our community, right? Like we want God to do something. Yeah, right. Like we see the uh, the Trayvon Martins, we see the Philando Castiles, we see the, give me some more names. We see the uh, Eric Garner, the Oscar Grant, give me some more names. The, uh, the uh, Tamir Rice. Tamir Rice. George Floyd. George Floyd. The George, George Floyd. Floyd. Like we see all these things happen in the community, right? Mm -hmm. Aubrey. Um, yeah. Ahmad Aubrey. Yeah. So the scriptures say, Rashad. Lord. Uh, uh, what's his name? Rashad. The one with Alabama. Yeah, the one that was Mississippi. What's the uh, oh, dude? Oh, right Rashid Carter. Right Rashid Carter. Right 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was enough. Yeah. Right, 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 right there. Right here in Portland, right? Right. Um, right. So look, let me read that scripture to you again. Psalm chapter 83 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Keep not thou silence, O God. So we don't want God to keep silent about all the evil that's happening to our community. Hold not thy peace. Uh -huh. And be not still, O God. Relax. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. So the Bible says that God himself has enemies and they make a tumult. Read on. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They've lifted up their head. They've come together in agreement. They got think tanks. They got different things that they use to try to go against God. Read on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They took crafty counsel against thy people. Thy people, according to the Bible, God's people, are the Israelites. And consulted against thy hidden one. Read on. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. So what God's enemies have done have said, they said, come let us cut God's people off from being a nation. What nation is that? The nation of Israel. So they don't want God's people to be referred to as the nation of Israel no more. So you know what they do to the nation of Israel? They, they give them another name. They call them niggas. They call them black. Right. They call them African American. Right. They give them black history month so that they don't trace their history back to the Bible. They just trace their history back to Martin Luther King and times of slavery. So we can get them to focus on Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X, um, Black History Month, Juneteenth. And if we, can, if we can tell them that the Bible is the white man's book, they'll never research their real history to find out who they are. Read on. They have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. Uh -huh. That the name of Israel that be... the name of Israel... May be no more in remembrance. And it, it, you know, you know how you know how we got proof that that Bible is true. When I ask my brothers what's their nationality, nine times out of ten they won't say I'm from the nation of Israel. Right. So the name of Israel is no longer in remembrance in our community. No longer in remembrance. Read on. For they have consulted together with one consent. So now the Bible's about to tell us who our enemies are. 
They are confederate against thee. Uh -huh. The tabernacles of Edom. So the Bible says Edom. Not only are they the enemy of God, they are the enemy of the Israelites. Edom, enemy number one. Read. And the Ishmaelites. Now, just to backtrack, Edom is the biblical name for the so-called white man. All right, so when we call them Edom according to the Bible, if we don't understand the Bible, we don't know who that is. But Edom is the same race of people that uh, Mordecai and Esther had to fight against because they were trying to kill us. So when you say that, are you talking to your friends, Turkish whites or Russian whites? All whites. All whites. The so-called Caucasian race. The Bible says they came out the womb red and hairy. It says they like to hunt and they like to be outside. They men of the field. What race of people is that? So-called white men. That's the so-called white men. That's who the Bible says Edom is. Read on. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites, the people that own the corner store, Habib, Muhammad, Abdul, all them dudes, they, they own like the water gates and all that, selling the fried chicken and the cheese steaks. The halal stores. Yeah, the halal stores, that's Ishmael according to the Bible. That's our enemy. But they want to call you uh, buddy. Hey, buddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We ain't buddies. You my enemy, man. Yeah, call me enemy, because that's who you are to me. Don't call me, I'm, hey, my friend, my friend. You only they friend because our community supports their community. Oh, because they don't want you to do nothing to them. Hey, buddy. They don't want you, they don't want, they don't want you to be a threat to them. Right. So they, hey, buddy, my friend. And you, and you spend your money with them, and they take it back to their community. So they love you as long as you in their store spending their money. But as soon as you got to go to the bathroom, no, 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 we ain't got no They love bathroom. for you to come spend the money. They don't love you, they yeah. love for you to go spend the money. Exactly, exactly. So my brother right here, ain't catch your name with the dread. Jordan. Jordan? Yes, sir. So the scripture's telling you who your enemies are. Edom is your enemy. Ishmael, the so-called Arab man is your enemy. Read on. And of Moab. And Moab. So if the white man is our enemy, number one, and the Arab man is enemy number two. I want y'all to take a stab at it. Who do y'all think Moab might be? Somebody else that doesn't hate us, but they're not the white. I'm sorry, somebody else that hates us, right. but not the white man, not the Arab man. Who would you say up next would be? Jacob. Huh? Asian people. Asian. Oh, Japheth? Japheth? No, no, not, not Japheth. Asian. Asian. Asians. There you go, right there. That's who Moab is. Right. The so-called Chinese. Yeah. But that's about it. They want you to get the hell on right after you get that fried rice. You hurry up and buy it. Hurry up and buy it. Get the hell on. All right? <laughs> they want you to buy their cars. The, no, no. Uh, what's that? The Japanese own the car. The Chinese cook the food. Right. Buy their food and get the hell on. That's what they want. They are enemies, too. Read on. And... And the Hagarines. And the Hagarines, that's going into the Africans. The real Africans. We're not African. I don't know if y'all ever heard this before, but our people are not African. Did we live in Africa for a long time? Yeah, we were in Africa. How long were we in Africa? Shoot, a long time. A thousand years. Yeah, that was years. yeah we were in Africa for like a thousand or two thousand years. But just because we were there for a thousand years, do that mean that's, that's where we're originally from? Nah, we've been in America for 400 plus years. Do that mean we're the original America? Are we the colonizers that came over here and you know had the, the blankets with the smallpox? Nah, that's just our citizenship because we've been here for a long time. Where we originally come from is Israel, Jerusalem. That's our homeland. Right. We fled deeper into Africa and eventually we got brought over here. We the the, the real Africans sold us to the white man as slaves and then brought us over here. So the Bible's gonna tell you exactly who your enemies are. Did you hear what he just said? You believe that? That's your enemies, the ones that he just said? Or do you um, think I think we good? might have a couple more. I mean, I feel like Ashkenazi might be our enemies because they kind of stole our whole image. They own everything that's us, you know? Very good. Now, Ashkenazis, who do they come from? And who do they come from? What does it go back to? Wait, that's what I was trying to, I was hoping y'all would say because that's what I, was, I, I didn't know that. Okay, so the Ashkenazis, they go back to Amalek. When you read the Bible, that's their forefather. Amalek's forefather is, is Esau. The white man includes the Ashkenazis. The Ashkenazi Jews, that's what you're talking about? All right, so those are our uh, a sect of Jews that come from like Russia, Europe, Germany, all right, that area. 
That's where they that's where they got that name from. And you got like the Sephardic Jews. They come from Spain. So, but guess what? Their forefather all derives, it all goes back to Esau, Edom. So when we say that our enemy is Edom, all right, our, e our enemy is Esau, all right, who was called Edom, we're saying that all of these so-called white people, we call them today, are our enemies. We call them all different types of things, just like today, we're called Hispanic, we're called Native American, we're called Puerto Rican, we're called Black, we're called uh, Haitian, Jamaican, but guess what? We all are also called Black. And we all are also the Israelites according to the Bible. So we got many different names. So when we say, yeah, our enemy is Esau, like the brothers are bringing out, that, that includes the Sephardic Jews. That includes the Ashkenazi Jews. It includes all, all of that. Because they are not the Jews. They, like you said, they've stolen yeah. our history. They've stolen our heritage. So how come we can't shake hands the way Jacob and Esau did? Why can't we shake hands the way that they did? Well, they ended up doing that. we do, right? No, I mean, they was cool after that. They, they, they mended those, you know, what happened. They, they were cool for a time, but then Esau broke the brotherly covenant. So when you read back in the time of Babylon, Babylon conquered us. And you know who helped Babylon conquer us? Esau did. So after he did that, the Lord said, you, you're done, you're through. You're you're an everlasting. You're, you have a perpetual hatred for your brother, and he's gonna have to pay for that. But let me just be real clear about your initial question. You said, "Who are our enemies?" Everybody outside of the nation of Israel is our enemy. That's what I thought the answer was. And I, I gave you a couple examples on who specifically those people are. But everybody outside of so-called blacks, Hispanic, and natives are our enemies. But the issue that we're having is our enemies have never changed being our enemies. The white man has always hated us. The Arab man has always hated us. The Asian man has always hated us. Everybody else on the planet has always hated us. We have always hated ourselves. We haven't always, but that's the issue that we have now. Right. Not only do all the nations hate us, but now when I see my own brother, he look at me up and down. If I make eye contact too long, he ready to fight. We pull up in certain neighborhoods, we jump out three cars deep. Everybody, you know what I mean? Like, yo, what's up? We gotta disarm everybody. Look, we just wanna chop it up. Do you believe in Satan? Absolutely. Okay the then. Talk, everything the Bible talks about, we believe in. Okay. So you also know what Satan's job was when he was in heaven. Oh, 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 but Brother Morton, I didn't see you for a minute. I don't know if you had stepped up. Remember we was talking about abortion. I just want to bring this back real quick. I want to hit everybody with a fact. All right, so I got I got an a, a article pulled up from Gutch Matcher Institute. It says, this is the, the opening statement. It says, this much is true. In the United States, the abortion rate for black women is almost five times that for white women. Hmm. That's what the stats say. So we got to go with the stats say because the stats is going to give us facts. Somebody might have an opinion like you had, you had said it was the other way around. The stats ain't all what they say though. Overwhelmingly, you can, you can find many articles. There's no article that's going to say what you said, Brother Mordecai. Hey, nah. hey, look, Mordecai. <laughs> Mordecai. If you couldn't get bored, if they keep, we keep dying, Elijah going to take longer to come. I feel like that's the point. We're, they're trying to make us kill each other so much because Elijah going to come out a black woman. So all these abortions happen, it's gonna slow down the process of the prophets that's supposed to come. Like just like they're trying to kill Jesus. Like, that's a good point. That's a good point. Right. Where do these uh we're gonna call them Edomites, because that's what the Bible calls them. So when I say Edomite, we're talking about who? We're talking about the white man. Alright, we call him Satan. That's you wanna call him that. <laughs> Alright. So so look, where do these Edomites, so-called white people, where do they go to have their abortions? They have so much of them. They have so much of them. Where do they, where do they have them at? I want to drive to them clinics, right? Okay. Where the clinics at? I'm sorry. I don't know where the clinics You don't know where the clinics at? KG, you going to tell the truth. Where the clinics at? Where the abortion clinics at? Hey, my brother. Yes, sir. A lot of times when they, when white folks have a lot of abortions, I think they go, not exactly overseas, but like Mexico, 
and uh, different places across the board. You know, uh, I know they do it over here a lot, but I, I saw an article one time where when they tried to start to cutting the abortions out at one time here, and they brought it back, mm-hmm. white folks, man, special college students, they would go aboard in places to have their abortions. Hey, look. What's your name? Cecil, Joe. Joe? Yeah, Joe. Oh, Joe. Yeah. Where, where are the abortion clinics at here? Well, we got them in, well, we got them, well, here in, right here in, this, well, right here in Virginia Beach, right in Virginia Beach or North, in what the Virginia Beach, Beach North area. What part of North? What part of Portland? What part of South? Well, I, 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 yeah, yeah, in the black area. There you go. Yeah, thank, yeah. You. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, how often oh, do you? Real, real, real quick. Real quick. Real quick. <laughs> we gotta keep it a buck, man. We gotta keep it a buck. White people can't even get pregnant like black people can. Right. Facts. Who is it having all the babies? If they could barely get pregnant, how the hell are they gonna be having all these abortions that you talking about? White people be having one or two kids. Who is it that got? three, four baby mamas, or who is it that got three, four baby daddies, or who is it that got five, six kids? It's us. It's us. There's no way that's that we right. haven't, huh? That's, that's not a way you can get a head, boy, because them kids are special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have four yeah, less children. Kids. So you're talking about a race of people that has a bunch of children compared to a race of people that's not having that many children at all. It's no possible way. He's a tissue, right? He got nine kids. There you go. And what race is he? Oh, yeah, dude, that's an Israelite. That's a so-called black oh, man right now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, you you got to think about it. Like, you can't even make sense out of that. <laughs> they not even getting pregnant like that in order for them to get abortions. Matter of fact, y- y'all, heard of, y'all heard of that, uh, y'all heard of that, it's that, uh, that process that they use to try to get pregnant. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Artificial insemination. Yeah, artificial insemination. Mm. So it's a new one. IV. In vitro fertilization, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah so think good. about it, like, That's like to make sense out of it. You got a race of people that can barely get pregnant. They using science to try to get pregnant. They not, and you, you can read it. You can read it. They using like science that. to try to get pregnant. There's no way they having okay. more abortions when they can't even get okay. pregnant. And they using science to try to get pregnant. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's no way. The facts are, are what they are. Our people are killing our own baby. Hey, look, this is uh, this is an article from the Brookings. This is like a college website, Brookings Edu. Okay, it says the white population is barely growing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it say. I didn't write this. All right, it says the white population is barely growing. And in about 10 years, will begin to decline. A consequence of an old age structure. Fewer births, more deaths, a little immigration. What that means is that many places, especially those experiencing out migration, are already experiencing white population losses. So the white population is barely growing. That's the point from this article right here. And now, go ahead. It ain't declining because they have an abortion. They can't even get pregnant. Right. And when you when you read the scriptures, right? Get uh Genesis chapter 25. We go to the Bible. We're gonna show you something about this so-called white man. Alright? Because all nations we can read about in the scriptures. All of them. All nations. Alright? Uh start at verse, I think 25. We're gonna read down. Yes, sir. We're going to read about the so-called white man. All right? Read what you got. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 25. Come on. And the first came out red. All over. Like read up. Read gone. up so we get the context. Okay. Go back to when... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 22. And the children struggled together within her. All right. So this was the mother of Jacob and Esau. She had children in her womb. Today, what do we call that? She was pregnant with what? Twins. With twins. She's pregnant with twins. All right, that's what we're reading about here. All right, and these children, they did what? Struggle together within her. They, they struggled together within her. All right, so that means that, you know how you look at the, at the woman's stomach? And the, you, you ever seen it move? You know, you know what I'm talking about? Baby be punching, moving, jumping, doing flips and stuff like that inside the belly? So these children was fighting inside the womb. Yeah. Right? They was fighting in the womb. Two twins fighting together. They struggling. You understand? Wrestling. 
Say it again. Survival. For survival, right? Yeah. Read on. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? She said, Lord, why, why is this going on to me? It's, it don't feel, you think it feel good? Two, two babies inside of you already, then they fighting? You think that feel good? Nah, it don't feel good at all. So she asked, well, Lord, what's going on? Read on. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Read. And the Lord said unto her. What did, the, what did the Lord say? What did the Lord say to her? Come on. Two nations are in thy womb. What did the Bible say? Two nations are in thy womb. So what did those children represent? Two nations. Two nations, right? If they struggling, are they the same nation? No. No, they're not. Come on. And two manner of people. Two different people are inside your womb. But they brothers, they twins. You understand? This is what the Bible that we're reading right here. It says that there's two nations inside of her womb. They're struggling. Two manner of people, two totally different types of people are inside your belly right now. Come on. And two manner of people shall be separated they shall from be thy what? bowel. Separated. No, they shall be together. Separated. They shall be separated. I mean, they cannot get along. Can we all just get along? No. You understand? <laughs> we can't get along. Right. Read on. From thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. It says one of those twins is going to be stronger than the other one. Right? Who you think that is? We're going to find out. Read on. And the elder the shall one. serve the younger. So the older brother is going to serve the younger brother. Traditionally, right? Who would be serving who? Traditionally, the, the, older the, brother. the younger brother would be serving the older brother. But the scriptures say, nah, not so. This is how this is, how this is going to be. You got two nations inside your womb. They're struggling. They're two totally different types of people. They're not going to get along. All right. And the one that comes out first is going to be serving the younger brother in the end. That's what the Bible just said. Read on. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled. So she completed, you know, nine months, ten months at the end of that. Come on. Behold, there were twins in her womb. Then two twin, two babies came out. Let's read about it. Read on. And the first came out red. So th is this the older or the younger if it's the first? It's what? It's the older. All right. How did he come out? Red. He came out how? Red. What people on the earth are red? White. Say it again. White, white people. Yeah, So-called white people. You say Indians are red? That's what they wanted to call them. Say it again. That's what they wanted to call them. They red. wanted to call them that. Same you understand? Same now, way they call us black. Are, are we black? Right. Yeah, exactly. I don't see that. I ain't never met a black person before. <laughs> we different shades of brown. Different, all different types of shades. So you might be the red shade of black. Who are colored people? Say it again. Who are colored people? Who are the colored people? That's all men on the earth before we read this scripture right here. That's right. Read it again. <laughs> I say it's white people. I say it again. I say it's white people. You said the white people are colored people? Mm -hmm. What color they got? When they go out in the, in the, in the snow, what color do they turn? Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they red. Them, what color they, they red. Red. They red. They red. red. They red. They red. Okay, okay. yeah, we'll go okay, for that. Okay, so they colored what color? <laughs> they colored red. <laughs> uh, we agree with that. The so, Bible says that. We agree with that. They, the white people are colored red. I said, you should know. <laughs> you should know? Who should know? <laughs> well, you got a white, somebody got a white woman? Right. Uh oh. Uh, no. Oh, who, who you said who should know? <laughs> Why you say he should know? Yeah. Tell my who? Yeah. Oh, that's oh. The, oh. Bag. Uh -oh. the cat is out the bag. Uh oh. Or the rabbit is out the hat. Uh oh. <laughs> no, the, the point I was trying to make is yeah. they call us colored. Right. But we're not colored. They are colored. No, this if is If they go colored. out in the snow, they turn pale. If now we just, smack them, he turn red. We just a different if color. If they get a bruise, they turn purple and blue. We all okay. color. So let's let's uh let's think about it this way. All right. Adam, when we read the Bible, the first man to be created on the earth was created from the dust of the ground. What's the dust of the ground? What's the dust of the ground? Dirt. Dirt. What color is the dirt? Brown. It's brown. So what color was Adam? Brown. He was brown, all right? So he had color. So let's think about it that way. So from creation, all men on the earth was what color? He wasn't color. Brown. Was, was color. brown. From creation, all men on the earth was brown. Y'all understand that? All right, up until this point right here where we're reading. Read it again. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. 
Now, this is going to prove the point that I just made because the first baby that came out this mother's womb, there was twins, two brothers. The first came out red, right? And it was hairy all over. What nation on the earth is red and hairy all over? Whites. Say it again? Whites. So-called white people. That's right. All right? All red and hairy all over. Come on. And they called his name Esau. They called him what? Esau. They called him Esau. So the first brother was named Esau, the older brother that came out red and hairy. Now, what does Esau mean? Because all names have meanings. You understand? All names have meanings. My name got a meaning, his name got a meaning. Your name got a meaning. You look it up, all right? All names have meanings. Esau means wasted away is he. That's what that means. Esau means wasted away is he. So we're talking about who has the most babies and who's aborting their children more. If this is a man whose name means wasted away is he, is he gonna be able to have a lot of children? His name in itself is wasted away. That's what it means. Well, now we're reading the Bible right now. And we're reading about Esau. Read that again. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Come on. And after that came his brother out. Now we're reading about his brother. Little brother. Which one was to rule over who? Y'all remember? Little brother. Little brother was to rule over big brother. Now little brother's coming out. Read on. And his hand took hold of Esau's heel. When he came out, he was holding his brother's heel. You understand? That means the first one came out the womb. The head came out first. What came out last? Feet, right? But attached to that brother's foot was what? Was a hand. His brother's hand. His brother's black hand <laughs> was attached to his red foot. <laughs> you understand? Read on. And his name was called Jacob. His name was called what? Jacob. Come on. And Isaac was three score. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why don't say what Jacob looked like? No, no, don't run, don't leave, don't leave now. Come back. We brought this up for you. Come back. Come on, bro. I'm not this up. Yeah, yeah. Why don't say what? Why don't say what he looked like? Who can answer that for me? Black. Huh? Because he was black, right? He was black. That's why I don't say what he looked like, right? Like everybody. Because exit. Like like who? Like everybody. Like everybody else. He was black. So there wasn't a change until who was born? The so-called white man. Esau, wasted away as he. That's why he was received that name. Well, I never seen nothing like this before. We're gonna call this wasted away as he. Because he ain't got no pigmentation. We can see right through him. His blood running through his body. Right, today we call them rednecks down south. Peck of wood. Peck of wood. <laughs> What we teach is that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans are the real Jews. The Bible says the real Jews are black. The people over there in Israel calling themselves Jewish got an ish at the, at the end of their name for a reason. Something that's black-ish ain't really what? Black. It ain't really black. So something that's Jewish ain't really a what? Ain't really a Jew. I'm gonna just show everybody one quick thing. We're coming back to what you want to talk about. Let's show everybody according to the scriptures what the real Jews look like. Give me um, Jeremiah chapter 14, verse two. Now, if you didn't know the word Jew, is just a, a nickname. It's short for Judah. That's one of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the head tribe. So everybody started to become referred to as Jews over time. But this is what the Bible says that the Jews look like. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse two. Uh -huh. Judah mourner. Judah mourner. Remember Jew. It's short for Judah. Read on. And the gates, there are language. The gates are talking about the leaders. They language, meaning the leaders of the tribe of Judah, of the Israelites, are weak. Read on. They are black unto the ground. Everybody catch that? The Bible says that the tribe of Judah is black unto the ground. That's the same tribe that Christ came from. I'm going to show you one more, and then we're going to talk about that. Give me uh, Song of Solomon 1 and 5. This is one of the kings that came from the tribe of Judah. King Solomon. That was King David's father. I'm sorry, King David's son. And Jesus Christ was a descendant of King David and King Solomon. Read that. This is the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. Read. I am black. Y'all see what the people in the Bible are saying about their own selves? Everybody in the Bible 
tells us what they love. They, they was black. Job said the same thing. Uh, they said the same thing about Paul. They said Paul looked like. Say, say it again. Uh, who said the name of Proverbs? Don't hit me because I'm black. Uh, look not upon me. Was that, was that Lamentations? Look not upon me. Oh, that's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Solomon said it. All right, read on. Solomon. Uh, I am black but comely, uh -huh. or ye daughters of Jerusalem. Read on. At the tents of Solomon Kedar. Solomon. Oh, right. Yeah, at, the, yeah. at the curtains of Solomon. Read on. Look not upon me because I am black. Yeah. See that? So King Solomon told us exactly what he looked like. And we, we could spend like the next 20 minutes showing you how everybody in the Bible is black. He already showed you, the officer already showed everybody how uh, the first man, Adam, came from the dust of the ground. It was brown. Right. Well, it's not hard to understand that uh, all the people in, Bible, in the Bible was black because when they described the white man, he was the one that lived in the cave. That's right. Okay, and the reason why he lived in the cave because of his skin. He had, his skin couldn't deal with that sun. That's not the reason why. According to the Bible, he was in the cave because we ran him into the cave. Right. We chased his nasty behind into the cave. And they was over there eating lice off of their bag and eating roots and all kind of stuff. <laughs> but, but the reason I said that is because there is a theory out there that says that, you know, it was three different races of people, Negroid, Caucasoid, Mongoloid, and, you know, the Caucasoid was in Europe because they were further away from the sun and the days were shorter and the Negroid people were in Africa because they Nah, we all come from Jerusalem. We was in we was in Europe ruling during the time of the Dark Ages. They were in the caves because we kicked their hind parts out. We defeated them and that's where we forced them to go. Alright? But I know you had a topic you wanted to bring up. Alright? So you were asking about what? I'll let you read about Satan. All right. Let's talk about Satan. All right. What's your question about Satan? What was his job? What was his job? Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Satan. Satan works for the Father. Satan works for God. All right. So let's let's establish that real quick. All right. Because we've been taught a lot of things wrong in the Christian church. Because we're, we're, we're taught that God and Satan got into a fight, right? Right? God and Satan got into a fight and then God kicked Satan out of heaven. Right. Right. That's a lie, man. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Right. Satan and God ain't get into no fight. Satan was created by God and he does exactly what God tells him to do. Satan can't do anything unless God says that it's okay for him to do that. So I'm going to show y'all a couple quick scripts. I want to read Amos 3 and I want to read Isaiah 45. So before we get into Satan, just to lead us up to Satan, let's talk about evil. Because Satan is evil, right? So let's, let's establish evil and who's responsible for evil first and then we'll deal with Satan. Uh, wh whichever one is just fine. Well, my question before you start, brother. Yes, sir. So, so when you say, well, Satan, and we know that it's evil, and the power that Satan has, uh -huh. then God give Satan that power. Correct. Because he would have never had that power if God didn't give it to him. That's correct. So 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 in other words you're telling me that uh the white man or, or or God gave him this power and Satan is not what he's supposed to be. And you I mean in so many words, you know. Say that last Satan is not what he's supposed to be. He's not uh, what he's supposed to be. In other words, God gave him the power to do what he have to do mm -hmm. here on earth. Right. You know. So now, Satan is exactly what he's supposed to be, and he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Right. The only issue on earth, the only, the only uh, spirit or people on earth that aren't doing what they were created to do is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives. What we're doing now, instead of following God, we're following Satan. Satan wasn't created to, to rule over us, and we weren't created to follow Satan. But, but like America is ran by Satan. And we follow what America puts out. So we the ones out of order. Satan is doing his job. Yes, he is. So let me show you in the Bible real quick. All right, everybody, anybody got an issue with the Bible? All right, everybody believe in the Bible? Okay, all right. I was raised in a Christian church, but the Christian church didn't actually teach me the Bible. They taught me that God and Satan got into a fight. And that ain't in the Bible. <laughs> but uh, which one you got? Amos 3 or you got Isaiah 45? Amos 3. All right, go ahead and read that. This is the book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? Now, 
back during these times, a trumpet was blown to sound an alarm. If an enemy was coming, the watchmen blew the trumpet and everybody in the city knew evil was coming to the city. So they, they grabbed their weapons, they got themselves ready to defend themselves. So the scripture says, shall a trumpet be blown? And, the, and what? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? And the people not be afraid? That's a rhetorical question. Yeah, everybody gonna be afraid because they know evil is coming to the city. Read on. Shall there be evil in a city? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? And who have not done it? The Lord have not done it. Y'all see what the Bible said? Who did the evil? Read it again. And the what? Shall there be evil in the city? Shall there be evil in the city? And the Lord hath not done it? That right there, the Bible tells us very plainly, the Lord, God, is He's responsible for evil. Right. Is he doing the evil himself? Yeah. No. Satan is an instrument, he's a tool, he's an employee that works for the Lord. So when the Lord says, yeah, kill him, Satan is the one that makes sure that it happens. All right, so that's one scripture. I'm gonna read you another one. Give me Isaiah 45. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. You see what God says? He's the Lord God. He makes peace and he creates evil. We all know Satan is an evil spirit. So who's responsible for that evil spirit? The Lord tells us he is. All right, eventually we're gonna work our way back to, uh, to Job. You got something you wanted to bring up? Yes, sir. Give First Samuel chapter 16. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. And this is uh, this is just to affirm, reaffirm what was already said. We like to give multiple examples so that you can have different perspectives of what we're saying. All right. So you can see it from different angles. You can get the full picture of what's really being said in the scriptures when we read it. All right. Read verse 14. This is the book of First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 14. How many of y'all familiar with Saul and David? Y'all remember the beef between David and Saul? Say it again. Saul, who was trying to kill who? Saul was trying to kill David. Saul was trying to kill David. Very good. All right. Read what you got. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. All right. So the spirit of the Lord left Saul. All right. For a time, Saul was king over Israel. All right. And guess what? David was in subjection to him. All right, this was before David was raised up as king. All right, read on. And an evil spirit from the Lord. An evil spirit from who? The Lord. From who? The Lord. Where did the evil spirit come from? It came from the Lord. Come on. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. It troubled Saul. All right, because Saul broke God's commandments. So as a result, the Lord took his spirit from him and sent an evil spirit to replace that spirit that was on him. Read on. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. evil spirit from who? From God. No, from Satan. From God. The spirit came from God. All right, but it came by way of Satan because Satan works for God. <laughs> you understand? That's like God's employee. That's exactly right. We got a video called that. Yeah, you should watch it. <laughs> but I want to make sure we show you the scriptures about Satan. Were you, were you finished? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So go to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. And then I, what I want to do is clarify the story that Christians take and misinterpret, which comes from Isaiah chapter 14. So we want to establish what the Bible says about evil, what it says about Satan. And then we'll go to Isaiah 14 to show you what that battle in heaven and all that was really talking about. All right? Go ahead and read that. This is the book of Job, chapter 1 and verse 6. So we're just going to do a little read. Just a little story right here. Read that. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. So when it says sons of God here, it's talking about the angels. They went to present themselves before the Lord. The angels are all around us. Everybody got an angel that's assigned to him, standing right next to you, taking notes. You know, God said, you know, don't eat pork. Damn, he, he eating a pork chop sandwich right now, so he take that right back to the Lord. The, the brothers came and told him, no, eat pork, but he did it anyway. You know what I mean? The, uh, the angels taking note, you know, you sending up prayers to the Father, you keeping the commandments, the angels delivering your prayers up to the Lord. You can't eat a pork chop sandwich. Lord, you messed me up, brother. <laughs> I, 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 ran, I ran 
fuck with you for a minute. <laughs> now, but look, Brother Mordecai, I'm not telling you that. The Lord told you that. I'm just his messenger. Huh? He ain't tell you. All right, we're gonna let him. We're gonna tell. We're gonna let him tell you right now. Hold that. This is more important. This is more important than Satan. Give me, yeah, 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 yeah. give me Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. But jump, jump, jump down to verse uh, like 43. The law of what you can and can't. Yes, sir. My brother Mordecai said, well, "You ain't, you ain't. He ain't tell it to me. You told me. <laughs> well, we gonna let him tell. We gonna let him tell." <laughs> <laughs> this this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, and verse 46. Uh huh. And this is the law of the beast and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in waters, and every creature that creep, creepeth upon the earth, uh -huh. to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, uh -huh. and between the beast which may be eaten. You see that, Brother Mordecai? The Lord made a difference between the beast that may be eaten, read on, and the beast that may not be eaten. The beast that may not be eaten. Now jump up to verse one real quick. Because Mordecai, Brother Mordecai said, this is what you said. The Lord ain't said it to me yet. Read Leviticus 11 and 1. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 1. Uh huh. And the Lord spake. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Read it again. And the Lord spake. And who spoke? The Lord spake. Now, Yehoshua came in the barbershop and, and talked about it. And the Lord spake uh -huh. unto Moses and to Aaron, Read. saying unto them. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel. Speaking to the children of Israel, Brother Mordecai, I asked you your nationality. You told me you was a Jew. So that means you are of the children of who? Of Israel. So that means this right here is talking to you, Brother Mordecai. Now give me verse 7. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Uh -huh. And the swine. The swine. What's another word for swine, brother? Oh, the pig feet, the hog maws, the chitter lane, the... the uh, the pork chop sandwich fried battered up with the hot sauce on it between the two slices of white bread. Go on, man. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> hey, hey, I used to be there too, man. I used, to, I used to eat that growing up. But then when I learned what the Lord said to me, I had to change my ways. I had to change my ways. Not because a man told me, because the Lord said it. The Lord spake. Read, read that verse 7 again. And the swine, uh -huh. though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, uh -huh. Yet he cheweth not the cud. The pig don't chew the cud like God said animals we're allowed to eat must do. Like a cow chews the cud. All right, sheep, lamb, goats, they chew the cud. Deers, they chew the cud. We're allowed to eat that type of meat. But the, the swine, the pig, we're not allowed to eat that. Read on. He is unclean to you. That's what God said. The Lord said it. He said it's unclean to us. Okay. Mordecai, you, you awake? You with me? Yeah, wake up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and Mordecai and said, we're pushing the sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you lost me after you said that. <laughs> so, hey, hey, Scripture said, I once was lost, now I'm found. I'm found. Uh, All right, so we're going to find you. We're here to find you back, baby. Come on, read on. <laughs> of their flesh. Shall ye not eat? That's what the scriptures say, Brother Morton. That's why I don't eat pork. Not because somebody said I can't eat pork. Because the Lord said the children of Israel can't eat pork. So I can't eat that pork bacon. I can't eat that pork sausage. I can't eat that pork pepperoni pizza. But I can get some beef bacon. I can get some turkey bacon. I can get some turkey sausage. Beef chops. I can get some beef chops. <laughs> some lamb chops. But I don't bang with the pork chops. You see what I'm saying? Talk to me now. I hear you, bro. Alright, you hear the Lord now. You hear the Lord now. What you gonna do, Mordecai? Go ahead, man. Keep on reading. What you gonna do, Mordecai? I'm working. Hey, I'm a work in progress. Alright, we gonna keep working. I remember that. We all in, in progress. We're we'll working in progress. We gonna keep working on you. It's all, it's there you go. Now, brother Mordecai, you know who told you that you can eat pork? Yes, Satan. Satan did it. God didn't do it. Satan did it. You know what I mean? So you asked about Satan? Hey, this is exactly what he, Satan told you that you can shave your face. He told you to break the Sabbath. He told you any day is the Sabbath. He told you to go to church on Sunday. He said to celebrate your birthday. He said eat the pork chop sandwich. He said eat the pepperoni pizza. He told you to do everything opposite of what God said in the scripture. Right. That's what Satan did. 
Because the word Satan means adversary. What's another word for Satan? Another name for Satan? We call him Satan or the what? The devil. And the word devil just means deceiver. So if the Bible is, is true, what would the deceiver do? Teach us to do what? Do what the Bible says? Do the opposite. That's the Bible. That's the devil's job. His job is to prove to God whether you really love God or whether you really love evil. Because righteousness we can find right here in this book. Righteousness is keeping the Sabbath day, it's the Passover, it's eating lawfully according to the Bible. Evil is going to be doing the exact opposite. So your angel is standing right next to you giving a report every day on whether, whether twin, whether he loves God or whether he loves evil. My man. My man. That's what I'm talking about. You know, that's what we do. We, we go out to the community to teach God's laws so that you learn what good and what evil is, and then you make your own decision. We hope that you make the decision to do what's righteous according to God and then join with us. Because we see a lot of issues in our community. The abortions is an issue in the community. The murder is an issue in the community. The uh, what are, what other are issues we have in the community? Drugs. The drugs. Yeah, the drugs. The stealing. Damn. Going oh. right back to the murders that we talking about. We I, want all idolatry. All the guys y'all seen on the news? They my client. The dude that got the dude that got in the shootout with the police. Yeah. Brooks. Known him since he was a baby. On Tony Boulevard. On Tony Boulevard. San Antonio Lee. Known him since he was a baby. We're trying to fix that. We're trying to fix that. See, this is what happened to the community. We we learned to live by the wrong code. <clears throat> we learned to live by the wrong code. Hey, my brother with the Dallas hat. My brother with the Dallas. The Cowboys. I got a question for you. Hold on. Hey, what's your name, brother? Huh? Hardy. R.D. It's your big boy. What's this? R.D. So, so my question for everybody right now. So, what what code what code do the so-called blacks and Hispanics live by in the streets right now? No what? No snitching. No snitching. Brother R.D. You agree with that? Hardy. Hardy. Oh, Hardy. 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 Yeah, yeah. You agree that the the people in the streets we live by the code of no snitching? That's what they say. That's what they say. But that's what we experience, right? Because uh -huh. something that happened, but then won't nobody say what happened. Right? Okay. right? Is that the code that we should be living by? No. no? Tell the truth. Tell the truth? That's right. So the truth would mean that I need to snitch. No, the truth will hurt you. The truth will hurt you. It'll set you free. It'll set me free. Right. 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 So brother Hart, if I committed murder against my brother right here, uh -huh. and you saw it, yep. what's your responsibility? Make sure you stay right under those uh, guys. I'm gonna stay out of it. Was ready to be out to see it. Somebody asked me. I just tested my number. Like, proper authorities asked me. Just call. Was that there? And that would be it for me. That's what we're talking about. Man, please just get that. Yeah, but what should you do, brother? All right, you should get it. He might come back again. What do you say? Kill him. You don't want to kill him. That's right. Ass don't lie. Right. So according to the code that God wants us to live by, we supposed to snitch. We, we want to call it. Well, now that, I, I didn't create the term. The term was I, I asked what the code we live by. I got you. I got you. I, I, I don't disagree with you. All right. Or, or witness is what the Bible attested. A testimony, a witness. Right. That's correct. But I'm right. I got All right. So I asked what code do we live by, and my brother said no snitching. Uh -huh. So that means if I tell what happened, the opposite of no snitching, that means I did what? Yeah. You know? What did I do? Uh -huh. I snitched. I snitched. So I didn't make up the term. That's not my term. That term probably existed before me. But back to Brother Mordecai's question about Satan and what his role is, his job is to teach us to do contrary to what God told us to live by. There's a code that God established that we're supposed to live by. Satan gave us a different code. So, so you got a daughter and somebody got to kill your daughter and somebody seen and came and told you what 
you look at that person as a snitch or the, biblically that person is a witness. A witness. A witness. In the streets they would call that a snitch. snitch. So in the Bible we're not gonna find the word snitch, but we do find the principle of what we would call snitch. So the person that is a witness got to go behind a closed door and tell you about in the street. They don't have to go behind a closed door, but they do gotta tell what they saw. They do gotta tell what they saw. But I, I want to read that to you. I want to read that to you. Leviticus 5 and 1. Because we got to learn to live by God's code. Because the code that we live by now doesn't work for us. We're getting killed. We're killing each other. We're not getting married in our communities. We're getting STDs. We're getting abortions. We the last hire, we the first fire. Whatever code that we living by ain't working for our people. It ain't working. So we need something else. We need, we need a different code that we can live by that's gonna give us some better benefits because we're not getting benefits right now. So I'm gonna show you God's code. Say it again. How can we do that? Ain't no. How can we do what? Stuff right here ain't working. They not getting up no more. Right. They don't get straight power. Ain't nothing wrong. He's talking about this. This code is good. I got you. I got you. Look, the Bible got the solution. The Bible got the solution. Let me uh. I'm getting excited. I'm moving around. You got to talk to God. I'm going to read you God's code real quick. Leviticus 5 and 1. And then I'm going to show you the benefits that God said that you would have if you keep his code instead of Satan's code. Read that. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. And if a soul sin. Hey, Brother Hardy, I want you to hear this. Brother Hardy, I want you to hear this real quick. I want you to hear this real good. The book of Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. This is God's code. And if a soul sin. If a soul sin, murder is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Read on. And hear the voice of swearing. Uh-huh. Whether he has seen it, if he saw it happen, or known of it. Or he know about it. He know who did it. He didn't even see it, but he heard the streets talking and he know who did it. Read on. If he do not utter it, if he don't say nothing, if he don't, what? Snitch. If he does not snitch, snitch. what the Bible says. Then he shall bear his iniquity. The Bible says that if I don't tell what happened, the punishment for that sin that I didn't even commit, now I gotta bear the punishment of that sin. Right. There's a punishment for me not snitching. So my job is to tell exactly what it is that I saw. Hey, I'm the authorities. Were, were you there? Yes, sir, I was there. Who was there? This brother was there, that brother was there, and this sister was there. Who pulled the trigger? The sister pulled the trigger. That's your job. And God says according to his code, if you were there, you saw it, or you heard of it, and you don't say anything, the punishment for murder is now on you. So I'm not a snitch. Huh? So I won't be a snitch. You won't be a snitch because you're going to be dead. As soon as it's found out that you were dead and didn't say nothing, you got to get killed too. That's what the Bible says. So the way you preserve yourself and get the evil out of the community is by speaking on the evil. Right. All right. You know what? You know what snitch has become? It's become like for, for a man to deal with one woman and not to have like ten girlfriends. That's gay. Right? You ever heard that before? Anybody ever said that before? Like a man to like it's looked at as a negative thing for a man to just deal with one woman. Right in school, let's say you faithful, you don't cheat on your girlfriend. Right? You just got one girlfriend you deal with. Will you be made fun of by your friends and your peers? Do y'all remember a time where that happened? No. You don't? No. You don't. Mordecai says no. Is that Mordecai? Yeah. Okay, he says no. What about y'all? Y'all remember? I know a time where if you was faithful to a woman, that was looked at as being weak. Yeah, I, I Y'all grew up in a different area than me, so maybe it was different when y'all grew up. Yeah. Yeah. Say it again? Yeah, it's like, like that. It's like, like that. that. Yeah. Okay, so y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's looked at as being weak or you a punk now. You understand what I'm saying? But. Right, is right. that, is that, is that what you can see with her? It don't matter. You only deal with one girl. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Your homies want to go who? You might be at the movies. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's weak. So that has become, it, it's been a negative stigma put on top of that. You're not doing anything wrong. You understand? You're doing what the Bible says is right. You know what I'm saying? Like, as long as you ain't having sex with her, you know, I'm, I'm saying like you dealing with her right way. You want her, you want to marry her, you want to make her your wife. You understand what I'm saying? You dealing with her the right way. There's nothing wrong with that. But society says that that's what? 
That's wrong. That's weak. You're a punk now. That's what snitching has become. It ain't nothing wrong with being a witness. Ain't nothing wrong with you see something, you see somebody do something wrong, and you say something about it. But th this culture we live in has said, yo, you a snitch now. So now I grow up, and I just don't want to be that. I, don't, I can't let the homies say I'm a snitch. Hey, I don't want to be seen as a snitch. You don't want to deal with the consequences of being a witness. You don't want to deal with the consequences of being a witness. Very good. Because it's, 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 it's some serious consequences of yeah. yeah. being a witness. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. It is. It is. Yeah. It, it, it's levels to that. All right? It's levels to that. All right? But we're supposed to be governing ourselves. But we can't do that if we don't have no laws. We can't do that. Hey, let me let me throw something out there. For God I live, for God I die. So to be a witness, it don't matter what the consequences is. When you live for God, you know that you don't really die in the first place. This flesh might die, but your spirit gonna live forever. Hey, Shalom, Mosiah, Christ bless. I'm Officer Yehoshua with Israel United in Christ, Virginia. And to my right, Officer Kayu. All right, and we were Brother Zafar. We were Brother Zafar from Passion exclusive styles and cuts all right we just finished a sit down a shop talk and the brother has some good things to say so we want to let him say it to you so you don't got to take our word for it right take it from the brother what you think about the day i mean that cutting hell these brothers just speaking straight knowledge that i know it hit it sparked a light bulb in my head man i'm just i know i'm dedicated to working but i know we gotta keep god first but these guys in here putting in the work on the field on the front line and i triple salute them I triple through all my big brothers right here, man. They going hard, got to the point where I want to tap into what they got going on. And my, like my brother gave me a pamphlet right here, know where they at, and I definitely want to build with them because I know, I know everything they were saying, I want to get close to that. Tell, tell us one thing you learned today that you, that you didn't know. One thing I learned today, what y'all was saying was, thing, basic thing, everything y'all was saying, I, I kind of knew of, but it's not nothing particular, but every subject y'all was saying was just on point, like for the abortions, how we, you know, how we need to raise our kids. Right. And you know, for the whole snitches thing, man. Like, that was deep, man. Like, 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 um, when our brother said in there, uh, a mother, a mother can, um, a mother can, um, see someone get their they child, their child get killed, but if, if it was on the other end of the foot, she'll want somebody to tell her, hey, who killed my son? Right. So, man, but these brothers just speaking these gems to us, and I guess I want to tap in what y'all got going on. All praise to the most high. So, Lord will, we can come back. Lord will, shoot. All the heaven rejoice if one soul repents. So, Lord will and brother Rafai give us a call, come to the school. The word never goes out for us. With that, say shalom. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Roll